You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday the 6th of March and I'm Kate from Milford. In economic news last week, headline durable goods order in the US was weaker than expected at negative 4.5%. However, the drop was largely related to a large decline in commercial aircraft orders in the US. The Print X transportation was up 0.7%, stronger than consensus of 0.1%. Overall, US factories for business equipment increased in January by the most in five months, suggesting demand is not weakening. More data from the US, including ISM manufacturing PMI data, was below expectations with a headline of 47.7%. However, there was a big tick up in new orders, although it is still negative. Also, prices paid had a big jump back into positive territory after four months below 50, which lines up with the upside surprise on inflation that we are seeing. Finally, in the US, the services PMI was 55.1 in February, little change from 55.2 last month and above expectations of 54.5. Driving this month's print, was fast increases in new orders, new export order, inventories increased, and employment. Also, price pressures eased, production pressure slowed, and supplier deliveries fell. In Europe, core inflation reached 5.6%, up from 5.3%, keeping the pressure on the ECB to continue the rate hike cycle. Moving to Australia, fourth quarter GDP expanded 0.5% quarter on quarter below consensus of 0.8%. The full-year growth rate reached 2.7%. Household consumption slowed as interest rates start to bite, slowing to 0.3%, and the household savings buffer continues to fall as saving rates declined to 4.5%. This was north of 20% in the depths of COVID-19. Finally, in economic news, Australian retail sales bounced back in January, after an unexpectedly large fall in December. January sales were up 1.9% month-on-month compared to 1.5% expected. However, there is volatility in monthly sales prints compared to history. As a result of new promotional patterns with the rise of Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales, which likely resulted in a pull forward of demand from December to November. Despite the volatility in the data, The detail in the January sales points to household spending starting to weaken. In equity news, reporting season came to a close last week. Overall, earnings disappointed with net misses and strong net downgrades. Aggregate EPS fell less than 1% in February, but is 7% off the 2022 peak in real terms. And outlook changes have been broadly negative with only 18% EPS upgrades and 32% EPS downgrades. A few key themes from reporting season include, one, the consumer is starting to look weak, with stocks such as JB Hi-Fi, Harvey Norman, and Wes Farmers reporting weakness from the consumer. Secondly, the housing sector is getting weaker, and several of the residential developers are relying on a strong second half result to meet expectations. Thirdly, inventory keeps climbing, which raises concerns when the consumer slowdown is just beginning. And finally, the cost of debt is rising materially. Companies exposed to floating rates saw large increases in the cost of debt. Turning to the week ahead, the RBA will provide its interest rate decision for March. Consensus expects a 25 basis point rate rise, bringing the cash rate to 3.6%. However, we believe most interest will be in the guidance the governor provides in his statement announcing the decision. As we saw in the February statement, the change in wording was interpreted to be more hawkish, so we will be watching the March statement closely for guidance. Next week, Fed Chair Powell will testify on the US Central Bank's semi-annual monetary policy report to the Congress. Finally, Euro area fourth quarter GDP growth rate will be released. It is forecast to be 0.1% quarter on quarter and 1.9% year on year. Thank you for listening and we will see you next week.